good and I am looking forward to this one because even though it probably won't be for very long um, we get to play as one of the cats and that doesn't happen very much in games except for maybe like when you play some like kids game or a cartoon cat or something but that's not like this yeah I mean there's Susan's right there so I doubt that uh I'll make sure you can't go over that while you're interacting with anything. So I'm sure uh, you'll use the cat to save her, but it's still pretty cool. So there's nothing else we can... That jumps there? Yes, it does. in the hole. Uh, I really like this. This this is a really cool image right here with the gray background and the silhouette of the cat and like the narrow space. So that's really well done. Alright. Hey there. Gorgeous. I see my old lady brought the bleach again. What a shame. I really liked your eyes. <laughs> it could have been a start of something uh, very exciting for us, if you know what I mean. <laughs> she does that every single time. What do they call it? Trust issues, <laughs> that's it. Well, never mind. Plenty more fish in the sea. I I'm not too fussy, but even I have some standards. Ain't gonna touch a bird like you, I gotta be honest, girl. You look like shit. But I wouldn't want you to think I'm not a kind man. Uh, uh, plenty of time until dinner, and you you're in pain, so... I've brought something to end your suffering. Think of it as an option. I've got this gun here. It's one of my favourites. There's just one bullet in the chamber. Large calibre. Yet you'd be long dead before you'd feel any pain. Sounds good, doesn't it? I mean, it's, ju it's just an idea, you know, no pressure. Ah, of course, you can't see it. That bleach turns your eyes to nothing but jelly. So I'll just leave it for you here. Feel free to use it. That, that bullet's meant for you anyway. I better go now. We won't want to get caught red handed again, would we? You naughty minx. What was that? You can't reach it. Well, what did you expect? Life's a real fucker sometimes. Well, 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 gee, mama, I, I don't know what's going on here. You sound like that or some really demented Forrest Gump. Not that the voice acting is bad, but I mean, I'm just saying that's what it kind of sounds like.
Okay, let's see. Okay, I'm gonna spit it out here, definitely not. I won't let me anyway, I'm sure, but. I don't want to get caught. I think I did it. I think if he's looking up, he'll probably see you. And he looked up right as soon as I got away, so that was good. What? Who's this? My eyes. I can't... I can't see a thing. That bitch. A key? Who are you? Say something. Anything. I... I should be able to unlock the handcuffs now. Okay, am I walking around in the... Yeah, I am. I have to, like, uh, see. This is interesting. The gun! That idiot left his gun! The gun! That idiot left his gun! No! No, no, no! I dropped it! Where is it? Where the hell is it? I've got it! I just took step by step. On one bullet in it too, so I'm probably gonna delete some saves soon, I'm probably getting close to the I don't hear footsteps anymore. I guess you have to. I mean, I can't. I'm using the arrow keys and nothing's happening. I'm sorry, Mitzi. I have to break my promise. Obviously. Can I do anything? You are dead. 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 You are dead. Hope you don't mind creepy posters. It's your room. You can do what you like with it. But... I definitely prefer this to fairies, rainbows, and pink unicorns. Did you make these? No. My boyfriend made them. Some of them, anyway. So, Miss Ashworth, I happen to have a bottle of wine in my bag. I was going to leave it to Robert, but I forgot all about it. Robert? The guy with the rats? Oh, yes. Of course. So, shall we have a drink then? We could get to know each other a bit more. I know, I promise I won't get in the way. And, I mean, you don't have to if you don't feel like it. But since we're going to live together for a little while, 
It won't hurt if we talk to each other, will it? I don't want to see that her condition, so... Yeah, that's okay, I guess. Great! I'll bring the wine. Oh, damn. It's one of those bottles with a cork. Have you got a bottle opener, Miss Ashworth? In the kitchen. I'll go get it, shall I? Yes, please. And while you're there, could you get a couple of glasses, too? Well, I know exactly what that corkscrew should be, because we kept trying to use it earlier. Have you found that corkscrew yet? We also need some wine glasses. She reminds me of myself when I was younger. Dang it, I did it again. Not sure I can fully trust her, but so far she seems genuine. Maybe I'll give her a chance. I say here a chance. Heh. <laughs> of course, this game was translated, so typos are something to be expected. <laughs> Not now. So far, I've managed to not get too stressed. And no one has answered me about that glitch yet, so... Keep lights off so we don't lose the power again. I like this the music right now. The ambience is really good. Have you found that corkscrew yet? We we'll also need some wine glasses. So let's see if we can go ahead and get rid of the corkscrew. No, no, let's look for wine glasses. Let's check everywhere they might be. Yeah, wasn't since you have a, a thing to drink in here? No, it was in the cupboard out over here. Yeah, 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 that's where they should be. Because of Eric. Eric. One for me. One for Mitzi. Have you found that corkscrew yet? We we'll also need some wine glasses. I guess we have to use them. There you go. Let's get that bottle open. Yeah. But we'll need glasses too. See if you can find some. I found some wine glasses. All right, that's all we need. Oh, and Miss Ashworth, I really must say this before we start. Yeah. I promise I won't cut your throat when you're asleep. Very funny, Mitzi. Oh no, I mean it. That's fine. But just so you know. I always sleep with my eyes open. That would be a really fun trick to uh, do. Sleep with your eyes open just to freak people out. So, the big C. What do you want to talk about? Oh, it's not raining anymore. Oh well, I don't mind rain. Sometimes I even like it. But according to weather forecast, there's a nasty fog coming. Now that, I'm actually scared of. I got lost in a fog once, when I was just nine or ten. I remember I sat under a tree crying, thinking some monster would appear right in front of me and drag me away. But now that you're a big girl, you know there are no monsters. Yeah? How do you know? The only monsters are us, 
murderers, rapists, arsonists. They're the real beasts. So far from humanity, they're no longer capable of feeling compassion or guilt. They're the ones we should really be afraid of. But whether they're lurking in the woods or fog or the darkness of our cellars, it's all irrelevant. You can't predict what happens. You can't do anything to stop it. There is only one way. You turn into a beast yourself. And like them, you show no mercy. Whoa, where did that come from, Miss Ashworth? I just don't like murderers. They're nothing but... parasites. Either die here or live long enough to see yourself become the villain. So, the big C. Want to talk about it? Well, to be honest, I didn't really want to tell you about it like that. I put you in a very difficult position, I know. It's just that I was really desperate to get this room. I hope you can understand. This is the last and most important thing I must do. Before my time is up. It's fine. You seem alright. It's just... I find it hard to trust people these days. Maybe it's time I opened my eyes to see others have problems too. Some, like yourself, even bigger than mine. What kind of cancer is it? Do you mind me asking? Brain tumor. Her name is glioblastoma. Huh. <laughs> yep, they're all girls, the way I imagine it. Just look at their names. Lymphona, melanoma, myeloma, leukemia, sarcoma. Each of them a fucking goddess of death. Beautiful and ruthless. Hmm, you might just be right about that, Mitzi. I used to be a nurse. I know a few things about cancer. And I know glioblastoma. She's a real bitch. Yeah, and yet she gets to be the prom queen before night ends while I disappear down the back exit. How long? He said I had a year. But that was six months ago, so... Yeah. Not awfully long. Is there anything... They've tried. I'm sorry. Yeah. So am I. Do you want to talk about something else? No, it was a really depressing conversation, but it fits the game really well. It fits the style, and I'm really liking the characters and everything. It's very well done. I wasn't sure if I was going to like it at first, but I'm really enjoying the game. I'm hoping there's some way we can save Mitzi, but as a realist, I don't see it happening. How are you planning to find this guy? I don't know yet. A bit of detective work, perhaps. It shouldn't be that hard, really. There are only eight apartments here. One is yours. That leaves us with seven. I was hoping that you could give me a hand, actually. You know some of your neighbors, don't you? Not many. I never really cared about them. They changed over the years, too. You probably also figured by now that this is not the sort of place where new neighbors are greeted with a freshly baked cake. You see a new face, you give them a blank stare as you pass them in the hall, and you forget about them a minute later. That bad, eh? Well, there's that bull guy who lives above me in flat five. He came here recently to shout in my face. He's a nasty piece of work, but I really don't think he's the person you're looking for. What does he do for a living? I think he's a train driver. I can't imagine somehow that my guy would be a train driver. Okay, that's good. Leaves us with just six. Anyone else you know? I'd have to think. You know, maybe not tonight. Let's just talk about something else, okay? I have plenty of time. There's no need to rush this. Maybe tomorrow we could sit down together and make a plan. I could draw a simple map of the building and with your help mark down who lives where? Sounds good to me, Mitzi. I thought you just said that you didn't have enough time, or you didn't have much time, and then you say we have plenty of time. Yeah, I don't have that long. You mentioned a boyfriend. Tell me something about him. 
Yeah, okay. Let's talk about him. His name is Jack. He's dead. Oh. Miss Ashworth, are you sure you want to listen about my miserable life? I don't want to bring you down. These aren't happy stories. And I'm not a happy stories kind of person. I'm sure you've noticed by now. I guess so. Anyway, I suppose I would have had to tell you about Jack sooner or later. After all, he is the main reason I'm here. I just don't know where to start. Um, this is gonna. I think these, this video may run over a little bit. Actually, I'm sure it will, but um, can't save right now, so we'll just finish these dialogue options, and then we'll go. And uh, we'll do the next video possibly tonight, but if not tonight, tomorrow. Let's start off with the very easy question. Tell me how you two met. Oh, we knew each other for like forever. We grew up on the same street. It's funny how we seem to be made for each other. A perfect match. I always knew he was the guy for me, and I'm sure he never doubted that either. Jack was absolutely crazy about me. We thought one day we would marry, have children, be happy. I never had many friends because I had Jack. I didn't need anybody else. You know, if there's one thing I'm really grateful for in my life, it's that I got to experience this pure, perfect love. Some people go through a lifetime without knowing how it feels. Mm -hmm. Yes, I've been very lucky. But all luck runs out sometimes. Mm. How did he take the news about your cancer? He thought I was joking at first. He laughed. And he got really angry. I swore to him I was serious, but he still wouldn't believe me. We had a big fight that night. It was our first and only fight. But it was awful. He smashed some stuff. His guitar, of all things, was the worst. He loved that guitar. Why did he break it? He was absolutely furious. He walked out on me that night, and when he came back the next day, he was different. He begged me to try surgery and chemotherapy. I didn't really want those things, but I did the chemo for him. It didn't help. It just made me feel sick all the time. I felt trapped in this strange place, where nothing that happened around me seemed real. Maybe that's why I didn't see what my cancer was doing to Jack, and it was destroying him as well. changed. He became obsessed with death. It seemed death was all he ever thought about, even though it was me, not him, who was supposed to die. I'm thinking that he, um, this is my opinion, I'm thinking that he believed her when he said it, when she said it, but he wanted it, he so much wanted it to be not true that he passed it off as she was joking and put on that act because he couldn't deal with the reality. And he was upset and he broke everything because he knew this was reality, that she had cancer. And that's when he changed and, like Mitzi just said, and he became obsessed with death because he loved Mitzi so much. It was almost, if not just like him dying because a large part of him would die when Mitzi died. And I can't even imagine how hard that would be for somebody to go through. But, I mean, that's just my theory on how things worked out. But, I mean, I, at first I wasn't trusting Mitzi, and I'm starting to. I mean, I... Uh, let's just continue. Jack made those pictures on your wall. Was he an artist? He always liked all kinds of morbid stuff, whether it was music, movies, paintings. So do I, really. We had that in common, amongst other things. People say it's depressing to listen to sad songs or watch sad films, but I never felt that way. And yet, you are scared of fog. Oh, that's different. I might be scared of fog, but I like spiders. They're beautiful. You must be out of your mind, Mitzi. No, honestly, there is a certain indescribable 
beauty in sadness. Just like there's beauty in the grey and ugly winter morning when you look past the obvious and notice what others can't see. You must love my apartment then. It's like ugly took a vacation here and never went home again. It's right what she says about sad music and everything. I mean, you can't make that your entire life. But there is beauty in it. Uh, you know, um, I'm quoting another movie here, but which came first, the music or the misery? Was I, did I listen to pop music because I was miserable? Or was I miserable because I listened to pop music? But I have one more theory, but I'm going to say it after. The only thing I think about. And I'm going to say that's this question. How did he die? How did Jack die? It was so distant in the last few weeks before... before he died. What I didn't know was that he kept looking for something. I don't think he even knew what exactly. But it eventually found him. Or rather... He found him. There are those forums online, you know? About all sorts of stuff. Fishing, computer games, horses, gambling, addictions. Everything, really. Accidentally, Jack stumbled upon one about suicide. There's a guy there. Calls himself the Eye of Adam. He's a fucking god on that forum. It's like a failed suicide club. People mostly try to help each other and offer support. Sometimes it just helps to know there are others like you. To listen to their stories and, and how they cope with their lives. But the Eye of Adam is an advocate of death. He dwells on human weakness. His job is to plant an idea. To give them a reason to die and tell them how to do it. Once and for good. Jack took the bait. Before he knew, he was completely brainwashed. One day, he sat down with me and tried to explain his perfect solution. It was the Romeo and Juliet kind of scenario. We were both to die together in each other's arms. It was supposed to be a quick and foolproof death. There was no chance we would have been saved. All thanks to the eye of Adam, who created a tool for perfect suicide. He told me it was very simple. All we needed were two easily accessible household chemicals, which combined together create gas called hydrogen sulfide that kills you within a couple of minutes. I told him he was fucking nuts, of course, but he just wouldn't give up. He reasoned with me, and he begged, and eventually just kept screaming at me. I figured it was his crazy idea of a modern romance. But it was downright tacky and just wrong. Finally, he said he would get everything ready and wait for me in our special place at dawn. Five in the morning. Don't be late. Those were his last words he said to me. Then he stormed out. I cried for hours, thinking I, I didn't deserve all that from the person I love most in the whole world. A few times I even tried to persuade myself that maybe he was right and I should do it. I just couldn't. I eventually fell asleep. I didn't plan it. My head was killing me. I was so tired. I woke up suddenly. I could see the sun rising out my window. It was nearly five. In utter panic, I threw myself off the bed and ran out the door. I needed to stop him. I needed to get there before it was too late. But right there in my bedroom, before I even left, I already knew it was. When I arrived at our special place, it was already bright. We used to go there in the past, drink wine, sometimes smoke weed and listen to Pink Floyd, sometimes make love in Jack's car. There wasn't really anything special about that old parking lot. But to us there was. It was completely abandoned. It was quiet. It was safe. After that day, I've never gone there again.
It looks like we can... Yeah, we're controlling Mitzi. And we'll do that next time. What I was wanting to say was, uh... Is that some people in life really are given a terrible hand. And no matter what they do, they can't get out of it. They always get really tough breaks, no matter how hard they try. You know, and they end up just like Mitzi. Whether it be through cancer or whatever, and it just sucks, but it's reality. But I'm glad that Mitzi was able to find something unique in all of it, even if that ended up in a way tragically. Because at least the good parts were there. You have to look at the good parts of anything, or otherwise you're always going to see all, always see the negative. But, uh, it was a pretty depressing story, but I'm really liking the game and the story so far, so that's just my two cents. Till next time, peace out.